in Bible Study Sundays, where we will actually be studying out of one of the Bibles I wrote. Tonight's rendition will be from the Sergeant at Arms Bible, which uh, I wrote this book, what, 2017. So this was like my uh, third book uh, that I wrote uh, in my series uh, of Bibles. Uh, wrote, uh, in my series. That's not supposed to do that. So this is like the third book I wrote in my series of Bibles, and I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, listen, get your uh, sergeant at arms together uh, in your club, and um, uh, like and share and subscribe this. Uh, hit the follow button. We are Black Dragon Biker TV. Uh, we're on Monday through Friday most of the time, and uh, we uh, uh, will be doing this every Sunday. Somewhere around 8, between 8, 8, 30, 8, 40, something like that, uh, as these uh, go by. So, this is a series that we're going to start in uh, the Sergeant at Arms Bible, uh, and it's going to be a series for disciplinary and uh, disciplinary actions. So, um, if you go to uh, page 63 in my book, uh, the Sergeant at Arms Bible. It talks about the Sergeant at Arms responsibility when it comes to disciplinary action. Now, I want to start this off with my, uh, you know, my things that I do all the time when I say, hey, listen, uh, this is Black Dragon's ideas, Black Dragon's ways. It's the way we do it in my motorcycle club. And this is the experience that I've had. Now, the, what happens in your club may be a little different. Everything is according to your own bylaws. Your bylaws are important. And, um, it's important that you follow them. So these are, are some of the things that you could be thinking of uh, as you are Sergeant at Arms responsible for discipline in your motorcycle club nation. So um, the first thing I want to say is that all bodies, all organizations, all police departments, motorcycle clubs, uh, 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 Masons, um, Lions, Kiwanis, uh, whatever you call them, Moose Lodges, uh, every organization, mafia, gangs, you name it, has rules. Some of those rules are written down. Some of those rules are um, uh, uh, written in blood. Some are covered in blood oaths. Uh, some organizations, their rules are really kind of shaky. Others have solid, hardcore written rules that you will follow, some uh, even in the peril of your life. It could cost you your death. And, and there is someone responsible for ensuring that those rules are carried out in every organization. Uh, a capo, a lieutenant, a, a commander in the military. You have JAG officers. You got all these people that do these kinds of things. So in the motorcycle club, of course, uh, the sergeant at arms is the one responsible for the bylaws and responsible for adjudicating uh, uh, discipline in many motorcycle clubs. And in some motorcycle clubs, the president tries to do it, but in more traditional motorcycle clubs, this is something that um, uh, um, this is something that is really um, reserved for the sergeant at arms. So, a, a thing that we we see happen a lot of times is that uh, uh, sometimes uh, there'll be a, a group of guys that operate like uh, super MC members. Uh, and a lot of times it has to do with the president and his squad of people, his squad of yes men. And a lot of times you will see judge, jury, and executioner all happen with the word of the president. Uh, I don't like that guy. He's out here. Find him. Take his colors, whatever the case may be. And this may happen in your motorcycle club. And your bylaws may allow for this. But a lot of you guys will look around and find out that, hey, this is not in your bylaws. And... What's going on here is a travesty. Uh, so hardcore motorcycle clubs that really move hard towards their bylaws, they don't accept things like this. That there's a one guy who's judge, jury, and executioner, or one guy gets to walk in and, and say two or three words, and now all of a sudden uh, somebody's out or out bad or any other kind of BS. So in order to, to be thought of as having a judicial process, a motorcycle club should have A, rules, bylaws, uh, standard operating procedures that everybody, two, must follow, and three, that nobody is above those rules from the president all the way down to uh, the hangarounds. Uh, you, we, we have a set of, set of rules here that everybody that is associated with our motorcycle club must, must follow, and nobody is higher than uh, 
than than this rule, this this rule of law that that rides within our motorcycle club nation. The next thing you got to have is a a system, a fair system, to adjudicate whether somebody's guilty or innocent, uh, or can't be proven guilty. Um, and then you need to have some kind of system where a person can ask for a review or an appeal process. And the appeal process needs to be based upon, did we follow our own procedures correctly when adjudicating uh, this discipline? That the, and, then, and, then, and then finally, uh, there should be a, almost a, uh, and I guess this would be before the appeal, that there would, should be a system that it's really difficult to find someone guilty of something. In, in the United States government, you actually have to have a unanimous jury for a, uh, something that would, would, would be something that might put you in prison or take away your freedom. A unanimous decision because we would rather choose wrong and let a guilty person go uh, than choose wrong and put an innocent person in jail. That's, that's the way our, our system of, of, of um, uh, uh, laws is, is, works um, idealistically. So to me, a motorcycle club should be that same way. There should be a high bar for finding someone guilty, the bar being higher than I don't like that person. Uh, I, I don't feel like that person's good or, or we're going to jump on that person. And then there should be some side of, sort of appeal process. Uh, and there also needs to be an investigation process, a process that, that someone uh, must, uh, there must be enough facts to bring forward some kind of a case against someone more than he said, she said, there needs to be some evidence. And then a person should be able to examine that evidence and, and face their accusers. So these are thought of to be like very basic kinds of uh, fundamental um, uh, uh, things that would happen in anybody's um, democracy uh, of fair government. Uh, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking tonight uh, about one portion of this, and we'll do this in several bites. So um, maintaining a balance of brotherhood and enforcing high standards is necessary for the brotherhood to stand the test of time and struggle. When a brother has committed an offense against the MC's bylaws, he must face the accountability and accountability system uh, competent uh, in its ability to, to examine the merits of his case and come to a transparent adjudication and conclusion by his peers. A motorcycle club judicial board, also known as a committee hearing, among other terms, is used to handle these situations in a fair and consistent manner. The, the judicial board is a group of impartial brothers selected by the sergeant at arms to represent the brotherhood of the chapter and make decisions regarding member conduct examples are where a judicial board might be utilized would be these following things. A brother acts in a manner inconsistent with the high standards of the MC. Uh, two, a brother breaks the bylaws. Three, a brother fails to pay dues. Four, a physical fight occurs between two brothers. Five, a physical fight occurs between two prospects. Six, a brother fails to make uh, mandatory runs. Seven, a brother steals from the MC or another brother. Eight, a brother lies about another brother. Nine, a brother screws around with the old lady of another brother. Ten, a brother speaks MC business outside of the brotherhood. Eleven, a brother engages in cyber buying. Um, uh, a brother kills somebody. A brother does this. A brother does that. There could just be so many different things. So um, the part I want to talk about is getting to this. Uh, situation where we have this committee hearing and that is the sergeant at arms um, uh, duty to conduct a a intelligent investigation an inve investigation of the facts see uh, one thing I used to always say about a president or a national president of a motorcycle club Whenever somebody comes to you with something, and so this also goes for the sergeant at arms, whenever somebody comes to you with something, they're always going to come to you with one side. They're always going to come to you with a side of 
uh, with an idea of, of, of I want to get something from you. So very seldom, if ever, is a person going to come with both sides of a story. So as a, as a sergeant at arms, the very first thing you have to be is just absolutely not moved by emotion. You hear something that's absolutely terrible. And it's happened to me many times where you just hear something that's so absolutely terrible that one member says about another member, and you're ready to get at that member. I'm getting him the hell out of here, only to find out later the other side of the story. The other side of the story that is not so doesn't look so good for the guy bringing the other story. And you just ama you're just amazed, like, bro, you left all that out of your story. To be in charge a lot of times means you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people in the motorcycle club that were your best friends, people that you came into the club with, because as a person in charge, sergeant at arms, vice president, president, regional president, regional sergeant at arms, regional vice president, national president, national sergeant at arms, national vice president, as one of these positions, if you're making decisions for the best interest of the club, then you're not going to have a friend who thought you should have made a decision for the best interest of him. And that's how you lose your friends. And it's kind of sad, but that's what happens. So um, you got to be completely unmoved when you hear things that would move other people. A, a sergeant in arms that's really good at what he does becomes very stoic. He's not surprised at what he might hear. He's not surprised at what somebody might say. He's not surprised to hear or see the worst in people. He's the cop. He's the cop of the club. He sees the worst and the best of every club member from the president on down. So he's very stoic. He's very laid back. He's very casual. He's very calm. When he speaks, he speaks volumes. He doesn't speak a lot, but when he speaks, he speaks volumes. And one of the first jobs uh, as a sergeant in the Army is, is to conduct an investigation. You don't hear something on the phone and then run and make a decision. You don't hear a bad story and run and make a decision. I want to impress upon you that you conduct an investigation. We want to bring this guy up on charges. Uh, what's your evidence? What, what, who are your witnesses? Take your time to conduct an investigation because a club brother's membership may be on the line. And we love these clubs so much that a membership in a club is sometimes all a brother has. He doesn't have a family that's worth a damn. He doesn't have a job that's worth a damn. He doesn't have a life that wor that's worth a damn. What makes him, or even if he has a family that's worth a damn, even if he has a life, even if he has a job that's worth a damn, but what really makes him, what really makes so many of us in this world, in this world that we love and that we've chosen to follow, what makes us is the MC. The fact that we love the MC. Hello, Mama Ro. Good to see you. Um, so I want you guys to to understand that in tonight's in tonight's lesson, what we want to think about as a sergeant at arms is how to go about conducting an investigation. Not moving on emotion, not moving on the story somebody told you, not moving on the phone call six or seven brothers got into behind somebody's back, but moving on an investigation, not making assumptions. Whenever somebody comes to you with something as a sergeant in arms, man, you should pull out your pad like a cop does and write down facts, evidence, proof. Write that down. Okay, so Black Dragon is said to have uh, slapped a goddess in the mouth. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, what are the facts about this? Who saw this happen? What evidence is there? After you've conducted your investigation, examined the witnesses, asked questions, now you can present a case that can be taken to the brothers for a committee vote. That's how that's done. That's the, the, the common sense way to do things. Not you heard something, you call somebody up and you tell them, 
turn in your cut for the next two weeks, you're paying a $300 fine. What the hell? Is this how the club operates? Are there no rules? Are, is, is there no fairness? Just because the president said it doesn't make it so. Just because two or three brothers got together doesn't mean they weren't lying. As a sergeant at arms, you cannot allow club politics to come in. And it always does. And I suppose it always will. But you have to stop club politics from coming in and, um, and, and, and playing a role. You got to stop club politics. And you do that by following the bylaws to the letter. Pull the bylaws out, follow the bylaws. Oh, I don't care who we're dealing with here. We're going to do it the same way every time. These are how these things are best done. So, um, finally, uh, after you've put together this, this uh, case, as it were, where you are examining the facts, examining the evidence, questioning the witnesses, as a disinterested third party, so what does that mean? That means, Sergeant at Arms, if you're the one involved in the scandal, then you have to appoint a special counsel. Stuff you hear about on the news and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you turn it over to the VP. Or you turn it over to someone that, in the club that is well-respected. But you got to be a disinterested third party. you got to be able to weigh the facts. You're not the president's errand boy. Your job is to protect me, the president. If I can't trust you, then you're not my Sergeant at Arms. Whoa! I got a bunch of jobs here. One is to protect the club. Two is to protect you. Three is to protect the bylaws. So I'm not your errand boy, President. If you've done something wrong, I'm getting ready to bust your ass. I've heard presidents say before, hey, my sergeant at arms, I can't trust him. He's not protecting me. I got to get rid of him. Well, in some clubs you can, in some clubs, no. The sergeant at arms job is to to protect the bylaws, to protect the members. And if you are abusing the members, then the sergeant's at arms job is to come after you and stop you from doing that. We're supposed to keep this whole thing fair and honest because what is an officer? Just a servant of the people. Servant of the people, the full patch brothers of the club. So um, once you have completed this this uh, thing, this, this uh, investigation, then you prepare the sergeant at arms report that you can take to the to the uh, executive committee to determine whether or not somebody needs to be brought up on charges. That's how that should work. Simple, but complicated because other things get into play. Politics, favoritism, uh, 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 who is liked and who is not liked, a lot of things come into play. It's not always as easy as it seems, but that is your job. You knew the job was dangerous when you took it. These are the responsibilities of the sergeant at arms. Uh, okay, so what I'll do is take uh, some. Um, I'll take some questions here since this is supposed to be live. What's up, Duke Rose, Vernon, Jason Bond? I'm just new, about to hit the. Uh, oh, it's two in the morning. Oh, this is Simon over in another country. Yeah, go to bed, man. What's up, Julio? Um, got all my good people on. Let's see if it's if I have any actual questions. Um, uh, Julio, my brother, I'd love to see you guys. Hit the like button, folks. Yeah, hit the like button. I see I've got Mama Ro on. Um, research, research, research. Hey, Black Dragon just tuned in. Hope everything is well. Uh, yeah, Braveheart's right there. All right, no questions. Hey, can you... Just press the button on, just press the screen. I think I'm out of focus. Just press the screen one time. I think that looks weird. Okay, we're looking good. Love you, Black Dragon. Thank you, Crazy Horse 1369. All right, so I think that's going to be pretty good uh, for us tonight. You can catch Black Dragon Biker TV on YouTube and Facebook. Also, we have uh, our uh, Instagram channel. Love for you guys to catch me over there. Uh, we just did a new video that will be coming out probably later tonight called, um, uh, uh, what is it called? My Brother the Thief uh, in the Motorcycle Club. It's going to be an interesting video. I hope you guys can catch that. Also, uh, my um, 
uh, online um, podcast, which is an actual podcast that you can get the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos. Please check that out. Like, subscribe, and follow that. Like, subscribe, and follow us here. Like, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram, Black Dragon Biker TV, and on Facebook, Black Dragon Biker TV. Hey, listen, uh, we've got gear, blackdragonsgear.com, where you can get our latest books and all of that kind of thing. That's my two cents. Uh, and I don't think I have any more questions outstanding. Listen, thanks for tuning in with me this Sunday. I'm Black Dragon. Be safe out there. Ride safe out there. Have a great riding season. We'll be doing this on Sundays. Thanks for tuning in, and get skinny.